So firstly we need to understand this very simple truth that man is a three-part being. Okay? So this is just a very simple truth that man is one, a person is one, but they are in three parts. Body, soul, and spirit. Okay, so that that's just a very basic foundation of this truth that we're going to look into today. So you have three parts to you. Your body is your outer shell. Uh, your soul is your inward man, in inner part that people can't see, but it makes up your personality, your uh, mind, will and emotions, your conscience. So there's your first two parts, and your third part is a spirit, which is inside you. Man is in three parts. He is a triune. He is a trinity. Man himself is a trinity. So why are we in three parts? The Bible says that we are made in the image of God, after the likeness of God, in the sense that God is one God, but he has a threefold nature. So here we're already starting to reveal that God is triune. God is in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And although those are three aspects, the threefold nature of who God is, he is still one. Okay, so that that's important to understand. There's a lot of attack on the triune nature of God in this day and age, um, as with many other things. But God is a hundred percent God, and the Father, Son, and, and Holy Spirit are all a hundred percent God, but they are in three parts. You know, the Father isn't the Son, but they are both God. Just like your soul isn't your body, but they're both part of who you are. So this is building already, starting to build uh, an understanding of how someone can be one, but in three parts. Your body, your soul, and your spirit. Your body is the outer, what people see face to face, or what you see in the mirror. Your body is the, your world consciousness, your sight, your hearing, your taste, your touch, and your smell. It's physiological, it relates to the environment. So that's your outer uh, shell. Inside your inner man, you have a soul, and that is your self-consciousness. It includes your mind, your will, and your emotions. And that's psychological. And this soul relates to others. And so your soul is the arena of what we would call your personality. You know, we're, t we're told in the Bible that uh, the tongue is like a sword, for example. All the damage and the wounds that we've received in this life from maybe words of attack or emotional abuse, or different abuses, these, these things wound and damage the soul. And the spirit inside of you would be your connection to God. And that's your spiritual awareness, spiritual sensitivity, spiritual understanding and spiritual motivation. Now it's really important to correctly filter this information because th this is where actually the new age and the truth of the Bible, this is where it meets head to head. Now as you may be aware in the new age Gnosticism they teach that the the truth is within you, that you can reach God inside you, the inner enlightenment and all of this kind of stuff. Well, this is where the real truth and the lie, they meet head to head here. So we're really getting down to the nitty gritty of all of this um, spiritual deception versus spiritual truth. If you look at this uh, diagram here, uh, the first image of the man you can see inside of him is black, dead, darkness. Our natural state since the fall of Adam is that we're born in the image after Adam, that we have inherited this corruption that came from the first sin. 
So we are all um, we're all born into a likeness after Adam now, whereas he was, you know, originally born in the image of God and he was connected. He wasn't corrupted. So we've all got this inherent problem is that we're born into sin. So our natural spiritual state, we do have a spirit as part of the body, soul and spirit. But the natural spiritual state of us all when we're born into this world is spiritual death. We are born into darkness. So to say that the truth will come from within is a lie. See, the old natural man is corrupted. We don't have a connection to God naturally because we are in darkness. We can't dwell with the light because what fellowship do they have together? What fellowship does darkness have with light? We have a problem, my friends, in that we are naturally unholy. So we're outsiders, we're alien to God, we don't know him. We're an enemy of pure righteousness because we do many things wrong. And that's our natural state. So we have the spirit of the world dead in our trespasses, in our natural state. And the Bible talks about all of these things. So then if you look at the second picture in this diagram, you can see that it says born again, and that there's been a change inside that person. No longer do they have a darkness in them, but they've been given a new life. And how is this possible? Well, look at this diagram. So here we have the body, soul, and spirit, which you're you know, more familiar with now. Uh, we are naturally, as it says, in our self-rule. We're ruling ourselves, living for ourselves. And so the spirit is dead, and it's got a lifeline there from God, but it's been severed by sin. And so that is a clearer picture there of, of our natural state. So how do we go from that darkness into the light? Because can we do that naturally ourselves? I mean, what can we do to change those dead men bones inside of us? What can we do to change that situation? Can we do anything if, if you're naturally like that? Well, of course not. Like standing before a judge, uh, you know, you're utterly guilty. There's no action you can do to change the sentence because you are being sentenced because you are guilty. So if we're guilty, then we need someone to take our place. We need someone pure to rescue us. And that's where Jesus Christ came in, because the inside of us, we need to be changed from the inside out. We need, you know, we're dead inside. We need to be given life to save us from death that is right to our very core, the very core of our being. We need the light to come into our darkness. And so this is where the truth of the Bible meets head to head with the new age of Gnosticism. Gnosticism says you don't need a savior and the truth is already within you. Christianity says that you do need a savior and you're dead inside and uh, you need God to pay the price through his son for that transformation, for that exchange. So what we've got here is Christianity meeting New Age Gnosticism Antichrist head on. Gnosticism says go inside yourself and Christianity says receive Jesus Christ. So we need a new spirit. We need a sinless spirit in order to be counted worthy to dwell with God and to be in his presence and to be in direct communion and relationship with him we need a new spirit we need to be born again and this is why Jesus Christ died on the cross when we come to Jesus Christ in repentance to believe and receive Jesus as our personal Lord and Savior now the, the truth is so simple see we should be like children this is not complicated because God doesn't want us to be confused. He wants us to be saved. 
which is why he sent Jesus Christ. So Jesus came, a, a light in the darkness. He lived a holy life. And then he died a criminal's death on the cross, even though he wasn't a sinner. Yet he was made sin for us. And you see the way that that exchange works. Because we haven't lived the perfect life, and he did. Yet he paid the price. He, he took our punishment for the crimes, the crimes that we've committed.